Hey there. I offer this podcast freely. Your support really makes a difference. To make a donation, visit ReneeMcKenna.com. Welcome to Spiritual Psychology. My name is Renee LaValle McKenna, and I bring my 30 plus years as a recovering addict and ex crazy person turned therapist and shamanic healer to bring you snackable teachings on spirituality, psychology, and all things personal growth. And today I want to talk about money and purpose. And I want to thank listener Yasmin Weiss for the topic suggestion. Yasmin became a Patreon patron. Thanks for the patronage. (laughs) We had a little message exchange. I asked what she might want to hear about in her suggestion of money, service, and purpose. Totally fits with what's happening in my life right now. It's become a lifelong practice to take some time every year or two to do a meta-assessment of my life. It's come from a decades-long practice of doing the 12 steps on a regular basis, and it's really valuable to take a deep look at how I'm spending my time, where I'm putting my resources, and what the feedback loop is in my life. By feedback loop, I mean what I'm putting out and what I'm getting back. And are those equitable? to assess my relationship with my work, my lover, my friends, my family, my body, where I live. Where do I feel fulfilled and nourished? Where do I feel drained or depleted? What's working and what's not working? And what's that about? And whether you take a week-long retreat, an afternoon to do some writing and introspection, or whether you take a few weeks or months to work through the 12 steps, or some other practice of self-examination, It's just a really good idea to pull yourself out and really take a look at what you're doing, how you're doing it, and if that's working for you. And if you're afraid to do that, then there's definitely some stuff you need to be looking at because the life force is always in flow and we are a part of that flow. And when we can participate and trust where the life force wants to bring us, when we can let go and let the river of the universe float our little boat, it generally brings us to the optimal place for our own personal growth, fulfillment, and evolution. Change is a perpetual process, and a lot of times we resist or fear that change, but change is inevitable, and we actually don't need to be afraid of it. In fact, it's our resistance to the flow of life that causes a tremendous amount of our suffering. We often don't have our own highest good in mind, even though we think we do, because we have limited perspective. And that's why taking this larger perspective, pulling ourselves out of our daily grind, spending some time with our feelings, clarifying our intentions, looking at what we want to bring to us and what we want to let go of in our life, or maybe what we need to bring toward us and what we need to let go of. Needs and wants aren't always aligned, but clarifying what we really need is often much more beneficial than just paying attention to what we want, because our wants sometimes can be a distraction away from our own deeper needs, particularly needs that we might believe can't be filled. And podcast number 61 is about the 12 steps for everyone if you want to look at applying that practice to your life. And I did a piece on needs versus wants, podcast number 151, because getting clear on the difference between wants and needs can be really, really potent and helpful. And we live in an interactive universe. Life is a conversation, not just with other people, but with the circumstances and happenstances of our life. And I don't consider it a coincidence that in this period of self-assessment that I'm doing right now, I've been considering whether I want to continue to do this podcast or start to put all of my energy into creating a YouTube channel and working in video, or is it valuable to do both? And I was just having that conversation with someone and checked my messages right after and found this lovely message from Yasmin Weiss saying that she loves every episode of my podcast and really values what I've been putting out. And from this perspective of conversational nature of reality, I get to pay attention to that. But in this larger question of purpose and money, then money is a major feedback loop for a lot of us. We put things out and we get money back. But we also put things out and we may get appreciation back. 
or deep connection, or sense of satisfaction of creating something of beauty. We may get nourishment when we eat food, have deep connection or an orgasm if we connect sexually and put our body out to our lover. Whenever we breathe out, we then breathe back in. And there's a direct correlation between what we put out and what we receive. And the more intentional, the more conscious we can be about that dynamic and the complexity of how it works out in our own life, then we can maybe take responsibility and find personal power or empowerment from the choices we make in how we spend our time and our resources and our life energy and what that's bringing back to us. And is that whole system working? And that's the breathing in, breathing out feedback loop in every area of our life, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, creatively, sexually, socially. So if I'm all outflow and I'm not getting anything back, if that works for me, okay. But if I feel resentful, depleted, martyred, victimized by that, then I need to take some self-responsibility because we do get free will here and we have a lot more choice than we might imagine in how we create our own reality. And if I feel like I don't have any choices, then I need to look at that in this meta perspective as well. So I'm going to be in California for the next six or eight weeks while I get a full knee replacement on my left leg. Very excited, totally prepared. And it definitely feels like a transitional place and a physical metaphor for being able to stand in the world in a way I haven't been before. And I always find it fascinating to look at the correlation between physical reality and my metaphysical reality or my inner world and my outer world. The state or circumstances of my house and apartment, at least for me, are almost always a direct metaphor for what's happening internally for me. If things are clean and in order, it generally means that internally I'm in emotional alignment and integrity. Now, some people keep their house spick and span and tidy because they're control freaks, and that's a metaphor as well for an inner fear of anything being out of place. So we have to look a little deeper at what's happening and how it actually correlates with what's happening inside of us. I've been working with a woman who is deeply depressed and overrun with hoarding, really struggling to let go of a lifetime of accumulation of a lot of really valuable and beautiful things, but it's completely oppressing her. She's actually suicidally depressed and feels completely stuck. She waited for years to be approved for this apartment and now it's become a prison for her. She's actually a brilliant artist, but she has literally thousands of art materials and collected items for creative projects. And there's literally no place to sit in her space. She's suffocating with the potential of her own creative ideas and so overwhelmed with materials, she can't actually create anything. And again, the physical metaphors are fascinating. Even looking simply at how we breathe. Do I breathe in a shallow way, just using the top of my lungs, or can I actually breathe fully in and breathe fully out? Can I deeply receive and deeply release? As many of you know, I sold almost all of my material items last year in preparation to move to Manhattan and start a new chapter of my life. And I actually just went through another really deep clean of my apartment so I could Airbnb it while I'm away. Going through physical items, cleaning out your closets, your basement, the pile of papers on your desk, cleaning out the pantry and the boxes under your bed, all really beneficial. What do I want to keep? What do I want to let go of? Brings new energy into the space and makes room for new things to come. So going through our stuff is like a physical inventory of our life. We can also do that emotionally, relationally, and in our work or business. Whether we do that with another person, with a therapist, a spiritual advisor, or through our own journaling or however we do our self-awareness, I find writing really, really helpful. Different voice comes out in writing than does when I listen in my head. It's even a different voice when I talk. 
I am a verbal processor, but process is different when I journal. And I find benefit actually in both talking and writing when I do self-assessment. And then having an extra person with their opinion to see things I can't see about myself to give me a different perspective really fills out the process. And there's a lot of talk these days about purpose. And I think we have many purposes in a human life, not just one. Many of the great spiritual paths will tell us that experiencing love and joy is perhaps our highest purpose. When we're laying on our deathbed, I don't know how many people are going to say, I wish I spent more time at work. (laughs) Unless your work, like mine does, and I'm so grateful for that, brings you joy and fulfillment. I love my work. And as someone who struggled for a really long time with work in general, it is quite a gift. But I've worked for that gift, and a lot of that work has been through prayer and this kind of self-evaluation. What do I want? What brings me joy? What do I feel good about? What am I good at? And the prayer aspect of that for me has been surrendering to higher purpose. Show me my highest good. Show me where I can be most useful that will also be fulfilling to me. And I prayed those prayers for a long time. It was a very slow, organic process to move from being a maid and a house cleaner to being a hypnotherapist and a mentor in spiritual psychology. But again, we're always in motion. And if we're open to aligning ourselves with our own higher purpose, we just have to be open. Sometimes we just really need to let go and relax. The universe has our back. It is flowing us toward that place. The Japanese concept of ikigai, love that word. And ikigai means life purpose and refers to clarifying our personal meaning in life in relations to our talents, our passions, and our work, and what we bring to the wider world. But in order to bring, we need to receive. And most of us have a deficit on one end or the other. We're either fearful and constricted self-centered, not feeling like we have anything to give or that we don't want to give because we're afraid that there won't be enough. We don't trust in the abundance and flow of the universe. Or we give too much and don't receive enough. That's always been the end I fall on. Overcompensating, overgiving, the sense that I had to do more than everyone else just to be equal or worthy. And in different parts of our life, we might have imbalance in different places. We might be really generous with money, but unable to open up sexually. Or we might be really giving or even overgiving of our time and resources, but unable to receive money. We might be an under earner, being really kind to others and unable to receive a compliment ourselves. And I always love the general question where am I being called to grow? And this is what's really helpful about taking this larger perspective on our life and what's working and what's not working. What do I like? What fulfills me? What feels good and I want to keep it? And where am I unhappy, unfulfilled, frustrated or stuck? And bringing conscious awareness to these things can bring movement to them because we are never, ever stuck. We may experience frozenness, but that is our frozenness. Again, the life force is always in motion. And when we become willing to align and participate in that movement, which is often scary as hell, moving us into the unknown, it's almost always for our benefit, our growth, and our expansion. And some of what needs to expand is our own belief in what's possible. We limit the limitless creative power of God. And those limitations, those constricted beliefs can often feel very safe in their familiarity, even if they keep us in suffering. Like my hoarding client, contemplating jumping out the window of this apartment filled with stuff and unable to let the stuff go. I'm like, leave all that shit, move out of that motherfucker. (laughs) Forget all that crap. Crap, stuff is always replaceable. You are not. And I know that kind of desperation. I have been suicidal more than once in my own life, not seeing a way out of the life I have created for myself. There is always a way out. And often the way out is something we could not imagine or create for ourselves. Our work is to become open-minded and willing to participate in this life flow, to fully breathe in 
and to fully breathe out. And notice which we have trouble with. The breathing out is the letting go of what no longer serves us. And the breathing in is the willingness, skills, and ability to receive what we really need. So we all have things that we are here to bring to the world. And we all have things that we are here to receive. And that's the feedback loop, the breathing in and breathing out still, that we can assess. And so as I look at how I'm spending my time and resources in creating content, time I spend with clients, with my mentorship program, I'm looking at starting to paint and create artwork again. And what's the breathing in from those things that I get? And money is part of that feedback loop, but it's certainly not all of it. So like with the podcast, knowing that people benefit from the time I put into creating it, that can really make it worth it even if I don't make any money from it. But again, we need to always be assessing because things will change over time. When I first started to do one-on-one sessions with people, I did them for free just so I could practice. And many of my mentees are in that stage as well. It was like a self-imposed internship. I saw clients for free for probably about a year. And then I started to charge only the minimal amount because I was really still in my learning process. And that felt like a really good exchange. People were giving me an opportunity to practice, and they were benefiting from this work, even though I was a novice. But over time, it became out of integrity to do this work for free. And although I still have that option and not infrequently will do a piece of work with a friend or even a random person who crosses my path, and it's part of the reason I offer lots of free resources, because I don't own this work. I am the steward of it. But the steward needs to be taken care of. I need to respect and honor my own time, my expertise, and my value. And as I value myself and my own expertise, my rates have gone up. But so has the amount of free content that I put out. Because I remember what it was like to need to be on the low end of the sliding scale to get the help I needed. And I don't want money to be a block to people being able to access this work. That's why I do free workshops on Insight Timer on a regular basis. It's really fulfilling to be able to offer this amazing, transformative spiritual psychology work to people around the world who might not be able to afford it. But it is interesting that I spent countless hours creating a digital course that really hasn't brought me a lot of financial return. And I'm like, hmm, we got to reassess there with the feedback loop of the time I'm putting in and what I'm actually getting back. And again, it might come back in money. It might come back in joy. It might come back in community connection or just self-satisfaction. But it's good to take that larger view and really ask myself these deep questions to clarify my intentions, to align myself with a sense of purpose, and to check out if I'm actually receiving an equal measure to what I give. And if I'm not, Something needs to shift. And that doesn't mean that every exchange is equal. That's why it's good to have this larger perspective in the long run. Are things working out in a way that feels good? Is my conversation with the universe rich and satisfying? Or do I feel like I'm yelling in the dark, unheard? And if I'm feeling unheard or unsupported, then I'm being called to change and grow because the universe, God, the life force and powers that be are presently, positively, and infinitely available. I'm usually the one that needs to grow. So I encourage you to look deeply. Take some time to clear out your closet physically, emotionally, professionally, relationally. Do a little unpacking. See what you want to keep and what you want to let go of. Pray for knowledge and clarity of your own joy, fulfillment, and purpose. And look at the breathing in, breathing out dynamic in your life. What's the correlation between giving and receiving of inflow and outflow in all these different areas? And then you can make positive, constructive changes where they're needed. And if you'd like some help with that process, I'm here and available to help you. Thank you so much for listening. If you would like some help with your own self-assessment process, shoot me an email, info at ReneeMcKenna.com. Totally love to receive your ideas for future podcast episodes. So send those along as well. We've started a book club reading Woman Who Run with the Wolves, classic by Dr. Clarissa Pinkola Estes on the archetype 
of The Wild Woman. That's Wednesdays, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, 5 p.m. GMT. We meet on Zoom every week. We do some reading, some journaling, some guided visualization from the stories and deep guidance of Dr. Estes and how to cultivate and nourish the wild woman energy within ourselves. And there's a link for that book club in the show notes, or you can email me and I'll send you a link. Deep gratitude to my supporters on Patreon and through this podcast. Blessings on your path until we meet again. This is Renee LaValle McKenna for Spiritual Psychology.